Hello, a very good day to all. So today we will be talking about a very interesting topic and it is about finger millets. So I will be telling you everything that any layman, any layman person can uh, or should understand about finger millets. So this is everything you need to know about finger millets. So finger millets has been known by different vernacular names and in general it is known by the name ragi and in some vernacular uh, name from South India or from Orissa there are names like Mandia and Mandua so different different places have their own vernacular name uh, given to this uh, super cereal so why I am calling this a super cereal let's see so first of all uh, let's see what is uh, this plan in terms of uh, you know botany or taxonomy so this plant is a grass one of the grass and it uh, belongs to the grass family that is uh, known as poesy and scientifically uh, its name is Eleusin uh, coracana so scientifically uh, this name is been given uh, for this grass and uh, so some of the very important health benefits out of a finger millet is that it helps in wet loss it helps in controlling blood sugar level it helps in controlling blood cholesterol and it is a gluten free and low fat food and uh, it is also an important source of antioxidants apart from this they are very rich in calcium phos phosphorus uh, iron uh, and amino acids so because of all these properties they have uh, gained a position of super uh, cereal uh, wet loss you can uh, imagine how many people how many youngsters are looking out for healthy food uh, for that helps in wet loss uh, and then every each and every household at least one person uh, they are suffering from uh, you know diabetes so they are looking out for a food that helps in controlling blood sugar level and then uh, again controlling blood cholesterol is also an important factor uh, as a healthy food so low fat food a rich antioxidants a rich minerals and rich uh, essential amino acids these are important uh, you know properties uh, to have in one single cereal altogether so uh, this helps to gain uh, the name super cereal for the finger millet so let's see so do you want to know more about this super cereal if yes then we will uh, follow the next thing is how you should identify a finger millet so uh, this super cereal uh, when when it grows you will find that uh, it grows in an erect way it looks like a tufted and it grows up to uh, 165 centimeter in height so when you see the cones it is commonly bri branch from uh, you know upper nodes to produce secondary inflorescence so the leaves are linear to linear lanceolate and uh, about 70 centimeter long so and then uh, the inflorescence is digitate uh, it gives a you know together it gives a, a, a finger like structure and uh, it has got one or more resin a resin is a kind of inflorescence and this inflorescence uh, the, the branch are slender and robust and sometimes uh, it is with the secondary branches so there is spikelets and spikelets are 
uh, six to nine flowered and six to ten millimeter long so the glooms are unequal and uh, shorter than spikelet so this is a uh, terms uh, we uh, you know we used in terms of uh, taxonomy or in identifying a plant so if you want uh, to find it easier of these terms then let's see how it is so this is how the parts of the plants look like you can see the inflorescence here you can see the leaves that are long and the stem is uh, shown here and the spikelets uh, in the inflorescence you can see so these are called spikelets uh, they shown here and you'll see the grain with lemma and palia so you you can find the actual green uh, which which is roundish and then uh, the, the, you can see the part of the inflorescent branch and then also you can find a floret without the lemma and pallia so these are the terms uh, we used in the earlier slide so this is the diagrammatic view of how actually uh, the inflorescence uh, and the stem and leaf looks like so uh, since we, we have already known uh, the important health benefits we want to know more about the nutritional facts right so here you can find a carbohydrate of 81.5 percent uh, and then protein of 9.8 percent fat of 1.5 percent and crude fiber of 4.3 percent which is a very good uh, or rich amount of uh, fiber it is shown here and there is a minerals of 2.7 percent and then uh, you'll find amylopectin in 80 to 85 percent and uh, an amylose uh, which is 5 to 20 uh, percent it, it can vary in between this range so when when i say amylopectin and amylose these are a kind of amino acids so uh, what amylose does is it helps to break down the starch and amyl amylopectin when when i say amylopectin then it is the uh, capacity to uh, you know store uh, the food for future use so this is what amylopectin does and apart from that there are essential uh, amino acids which is about 44.7 percent and then calcium of 344 milligram uh, every 100 gram and potassium of 408 milligram every 100 gram and iron of 6.3 milligram per 100 gram so these are the important nutritional facts that uh, you know finger millet has got and i'll try to give you a further uh, explanation of all these uh, you know numerical data of nutritional values so let's compare a little uh, you know new nutritional uh, values or numerical data with rice and wheat so when you compare finger millet uh, and uh, wheat and rice then uh, you will find that uh, calcium has uh, in finger millet is far more than that of rice and wheat phosphorus is again far more than uh, rice uh, but less than wheat and then uh, in terms of uh, iron content uh, yes it has got a moderate content of iron uh, but more than rice and then uh, potassium has, uh, it has got a high content of potassium uh, and manganese you'll find a high content of manganese and then uh, zinc uh, it is more than rice but then it is slightly less than wheat and then there is the presence of uh, molybdenum which is more than rice and wheat and then carbohydrate uh, it is somewhat you know uh, on an average comparing with the rice and wheat 
uh, in protein uh, yes again uh, it is slightly equal in percentage uh, you know it doesn't make much difference in protein and uh, fat in terms of fat you will see that it is less than both rice and wheat so uh, these factors which is less than uh, you know fat has got a very good value which is less than rice and wheat and then uh, the high uh, you know content of potassium uh, the high content of calcium uh, and then uh, you know high low, low content of fat this is a uh, very important when you compare with rice so even if you have a uh, you know similar content of carbohydrates similar content of protein uh, finger millet have got a very important factor uh, that is, uh, it, is it, it has got a carbohydrate of 81.5 percent amylopectin of uh, 80 to 85 percent amylose of 5 to 20 percent like i said amylose it helps in uh, digesting the uh, starch so the glycemic index is uh, between 54 to 68 uh, it is okay but uh, uh, this important fact is that uh, the the kind of starch uh, it has got is a slowly digestible uh, starch uh, or a resistant starch so what is this starch when if someone asks then it is a uh, uh, this kind of starch it, it takes time to uh, digest and it slows uh, you know it slow down the increase in a blood sugar level so when you consume such kind of cereals uh, it will not uh, lead to a sudden increase in the blood sugar level and because of this it is an important uh, you know food crop that that can be consumed by you know diabetic patients uh, because it will really help uh, uh to maintain their uh, blood sugar level so this is an important fact uh, for the consumption of uh, this cereal other than uh, other cereals like rice and wheat so uh, let's compare a little on the essential amino acids so there are uh, amino acid and essential amino acid so essential amino acid is the kind of amino acid you have to get it from the uh, you know uh, outside diets that diets that you take uh, on the other hand amino acids are uh, normal amino acids are you know uh, are formed inside the body so you don't need uh, to take from outside uh, you know diets but it will form inside the body but essential amino acids you get it from the diets you take so some of the essential amino acids i am comparing uh, with finger millet uh, to rice and wheat uh, the first one is lysine uh, lysine uh, the, uh, the content is in terms of milligram per gram so it's uh, 220 which is more than wheat and uh, less than rice okay and then uh, tryptophan and uh, tryptophan uh, the content is 100 which is more than both rice and wheat phenyl adenine uh, it is 310 which is both more than rice and wheat and then methionine is again more than two uh, you know rice and wheat which is 210 cysteine is 140 which is both you know which is more than both of the rice and wheat uh, leucine 690 a uh, valine uh, 480 which is bo uh, you know increase or which is more than both the rice and wheat so why uh, i am telling you all this numerical that data i will show you uh, in a short time so uh, there are some important health benefits for the essential amino acids so what does this lysine do is uh, lysine inhibits viruses and lysine uh, you know with the uh, you know with 
Now, vitamin C together, it forms a compound that is L-carnitine. It is a biochemical compound that enables uh, muscle tissues to use oxygen more efficiently and it helps in delaying fatigue. So this is uh, the function or importance of lysine. The next uh, essential amino acid is tryptophan. So what tryptophan does is it prevents a fatty buildup in the liver and it is also a precursor of the key neurotransmitter serotonin which exerts a calming effect. Uh, this is about tryptophan. Phenylalanine, uh, you know, uh, with this essential amino acid, there is the production of collagen, a precursor of tyrosine that enhances learning, uh, memory, mood, and alertness. This is about phenylalanine. And then methionine, in, it increases the antioxidant level, that is glutathione and also reduces blood cholesterol levels. So uh, the next is leucine. It promotes healing of skin and broken bones, and it also reduces uh, muscle protein breakdown. So this is about leucine. And lastly, but not the least, valine. Uh, so valine influences brain uh, uptake of other neurotransmitter precursors, that is, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. So let's see some other interesting facts uh, on the distribution and origin of uh, finger millets. That is uh, finger millets, it is of African origin. And you know, uh, the finger millets have been recorded a long time back uh, in the early Iron Age or pre-Iron Age, that is, uh, 500 BC at that period of time they they were people were using and you know it is also been recorded at Python it is a place in Maharashtra uh, and it's been recorded in this place in the prehistoric period and also in uh, Wanda of in Africa so Wanda is a place in Africa and it uh, this has been recorded around the 10th AD so uh, there are many places uh, that a finger millet has been you know cultivating and it is cultivated in more than 25 countries of asia and africa so you can see uh, the map down there the red dots uh, showing the place where finger millets have been cultivated so uh, in india interestingly it ranks the Sixth position of production after maize, wheat, rice, sorghum, and bajra. So this is an, uh, you know, a big uh, clap for India. So let's see about the interesting uh, fact, uh, you know, about other health benefits. Of finger millets. Firstly, uh, there are many factors that lead to uh, tumor or cancer in the body, but uh, many of the you know bioactive compounds or secondary metabolites that you find in a uh, fruit, they help as a anti-cancerous agent. So one of uh, the compound that is beta carotene uh, linoic acid. So these uh, is a compound that you find in finger millet and it is a type of phenolic acid. So the presence of this phenolic acid, uh, it acts uh, as the, you know, um, antioxidant uh, properties and uh, this helps in the antioxidant activity. And because of uh, this property, uh, it, this plant or this crop is used as an anti-tumorogenic uh, agent. So uh, again, uh, not really about the uh, finger millet, but uh, when you generally when you find a high dietary fiber food, including uh, this plant that is uh, finger millet, 
it is a high uh, fiber food and when you consume high fiber food uh, what happens is uh, it delayed nutrient absorption and uh, it lowers the blood uh, you know lipids and uh, because of which it, it, it helps in the prevention of colon cancer so uh, this is a general fact about consuming high dietary food but uh, on the other hand uh, millet uh, finger millet is another high fiber food so in both ways uh, it helps as an anti-cancer or anti-tumorogenic uh, activity so uh, because of the presence of the essential amino acids i would say you can find that these uh, crop helps to prevent osteoporosis and uh, you know uh, an attempt by the scientists and researchers are continuously finding ways to uh, develop a drug that prevent uh, osteoporosis so again it helps to treat leprosy and liver diseases and it helps to cure measles, pneumonia, and smallpox. So apart from this, it helps, uh, you know, it's an important antimicrobial uh, agent and also treat anemia. So these are some of the additional uh, medicinal properties that you find uh, in consuming uh, finger millet. So some of the, you know, uh, ethnobotanical data shows that uh, consuming the leaf juice uh, uh, or uh, in a you know uh, women during childbirth it helps uh, as a diaphoretic uh, diuretic and vermifuge so to make it easier when you say diaphoretic uh, it helps uh, you know consuming this juice helps uh, to release uh, over perspiration i mean not to have the perspiration much of the perspiration and then uh, diuretic when you say it, it, it helps to build a fluid in the body and it increases the production of urine so it's a good way and vermeer's fuse uh, as in easy terms uh, when you say it expels a worm from the intestine so uh, so in these factors the the leaves juice can be uh, given to women during childbirth so these are some of the other health benefits you find uh, by consuming the cereal so there are certain advantages of cultivating a finger millet so this is really for the farmers because uh, in cultivating rice we have to take a lot of caution uh, with respect to you know the rain with respect to irrigation with respect to storage and then pace problems but when you cultivate a finger millet uh, firstly it is resistant to droughts paste and pathogens and it is uh, self pollinated so it can grow even in non-irrigated conditions and very low rainfall region uh, so it's a really uh, helpful for indian farmers i i think so so it's also a short growing uh, season crop so you can uh, produce uh, a good amount and then the crop is uh, significant for starvation in climb zones uh, mostly because uh, they are uh, when such places with starvation uh, in climb zones uh, the, these are resistant to droughts and then pays maybe because of these reasons they can be used uh, in starvation in climb zones and then uh, it can be stored for a very long time without insect paste or rodent damage so these are a really really you know advantage uh, good advantages that you get by cultivating uh, finger millet so you can uh, find a huge number of value-added products out of this uh, finger millet uh, crop you can find uh, Italy and then you know 
pasta cake and then khichdi and then uh, soups laddus and there are many more uh, value added food products that you can find these are just this a few that i am showing here so india has uh, an india millet initiative where uh, you know international year of millet 2023 has been considered as an international year of millets so india is honored to be at the forefront for popularizing millets and millet consumption uh, further for the nutrition food security and the welfare of the farmers this is a great crop uh, that can be cultivated and uh, that's all for finger millets that i think every person should know and then consume it considering uh, a lot of advantages in terms of health and in terms of its uh, advantages of cultivation so and storage so nutri uh, and, uh, the nutritional values and then it, how uh, it has got such a huge medicinal value it's incredible and it's uh, i think it's a really a super crop super cereal thank you very much